Hello everyone, welcome back to The Way That I See It. My name is Lucy Superfox and this is my podcast. So a little bit nasally today, I've not been well the last week, but what has been great about that is that I have been in bed for days and days and I was doing a lot of reflecting and a lot of thinking and it actually has led me over the last 24 hours to creating a ton of new free stuff for you guys because I've just been reflecting on kind of my experiences, what's been happening over the last year and really just being able to bring that into condensing it into some lessons for you so that's what's led to the topic of today's podcast this definitely wasn't the plan it's also led to the production of a brand new free money masterclass and that masterclass is all about the energetics of money the stuff they would never teach you in school and three rules that I have really learned and I'm learning to master that have allowed me to be making and receiving kind of multi six figures since 2019, no matter what was happening in the economy. So if you want to check that out, you can go to lucysuperfox.com forward slash money masterclass, and it's completely free. So in this week's episode, I just wanted to dive in really quickly into money mindset, but connected to ADHD. So I have been working with a lot of clients lately through the six week shift, and you can work with me on a coaching call program. You can attach it to any of the courses that I have. So you can kind of choose to jump in with, you know, the money course, or you can choose to jump in with the entrepreneur program and you can then purchase a coaching call package with me. So I've actually been working with quite a few new clients um, through the six week share, through the coaching call package. And a lot of these clients do have ADHD, whether it's diagnosed or undiagnosed, they're aware of it. And money is obviously a topic that we discuss a lot. And as someone who found out in 2022 that I was ADHD, and as someone who's been on a really, really interesting journey with money, I thought there were there were just lots of similarities and parallels with all the clients I've been helping. And I think a lot of the traits are massively connected to ADHD. So when it comes to money mindset, money behaviors. And so I thought I'd just share some of these with you and how to overcome them and really I've given you all the tools and resources that you need to master in that free masterclass so that's lucysuperfox.com forward slash money masterclass and I'll put the link in the show notes below as well but let's talk about kind of our general vibe with money when we have ADHD so often if we have ADHD and it's called attention deficit disorder but actually I heard Gary Brecker say it's attention overload disorder and I thought that was great because actually what it is is not that you don't have attention it's that you get really easily overloaded and your brain's got 900 tabs open and we can fixate on something if we've got enough desire and there's enough dopamine connected to it right so when it comes to money money for most people with ADHD often becomes a fixation And it becomes a fixation because there's a lot of dopamine attached to it because money buys stuff, money buys trips, money buys experiences, money buys freedom, money buys choices, money is, and you know, as the saying goes, it's not the number one, but it's right up there with oxygen, right? Like money is a facilitator. And for people with ADHD who often value freedom and choice, and the reason we value freedom and choice is because of that attention overload, because the thought of sitting in the same job day in day out is like because the reason we value freedom and choice is because monotony for us is literally intoxicating you know boredom feels like we're suffocated so we often as a by proxy value freedom and choice and so money is the enabler of that money is the driver of that and so we can often fixate on money and this often leads to really what i've witnessed is very two distinct polarizing relationships with money so one either there is never enough there's a lot of overspending there's a lot of debt there's a lot of lack going on and again don't forget guys the ADHD has links to you know childhood trauma to childhood wounding so there's potentially a lot of like deeper stuff under underpinning that lack or on the flip side of that money it's not that money um becomes an obsession in itself but the obsession of earning money, receiving money, making money, spending money becomes an obsession. And neither are are wrong or bad. And this is not coming from a judgment place. This is just me witnessing. And me witnessing that I have been the person who has been in the lack energy of money and the controlling negative fixation. And I've also been in the positive abundant fixation of money. And again, my primary reason being because money allows me the freedom and the choice to live the life on my terms, to facilitate my ADHD, feeling like I can breathe, but also, you know, that actually gives me the, has has given me the resources, that's a great word, money has given me the resources to do my therapy, to do all my work, to do my, you know, to get all my qualifications, to 
pay for my life, to have my house. So there's there's an element, there's lots of practical elements around money that we all value and need money, right? It's the currency that makes the world go round. But with ADHD, there tends to be two polarizing fixations, either the fixation on the lack and the negative, and that's often connected to our worth and a vibration of lack, and the fixation on the earning, the receiving, the hustling, the driving, right? So one of the things that I've really spotted, if we talk about the lack mindset first, So one of the things that I've spotted is that I think credit cards and loans and things that are like not not cash money, right? So it is cash money, not our cash money. We're not overflowing in cash. It's not coming from overflow. It's coming from something ahead of time, a forward advance, right? There is so much dopamine in that because it means we can eat, meet our instant gratification. So This is why I often think a lot of people with ADHD get into debt. Obviously, there's some financial education and, you know, to be considered here, guys, like there's always room for more financial education. But I don't think it's ever been about the practical. Like if you think about food, we know that salad is better for us than chips, but most of us would prefer to eat chips than salad. Right. So most people know that spending money, lots of money on a credit card over time isn't necessarily the the most conducive way to wealth. Most people know that, but that doesn't change the behavior. And that's because knowledge doesn't change behavior, right? Our emotional interpretation of that is what changes it. So when we, when we are chemically driven, because we're not emotionally driven. So let me explain. So emotionally driven means, well, actually, mm, chemically driven, right? Let me start again. When we're chemically driven, we're not running the show. When we are chemically driven, So we are chasing a feeling that's chemical. So, you know, we're deprived of dopamine. Maybe we've had a really boring day. Maybe we're feeling overloaded. Maybe we're feeling drained. We're chemically seeking something. It's why a lot of people emotionally eat. It's why a lot of people emotionally drink. It's why a lot of people seek a behavior that creates a high dose instant fact, instant input of dopamine, right? That's the same thing with money. So when we're chemically driven and we move from being chemically driven to um, emotionally driven to then onto like, healed and authentically driven they're three things I've made up today so I hope they make sense so when we're chemically driven right and we're chasing the next thing credit cards can be really really exciting or loans or money like I said forward advance money can be really really exciting and that's because we get the instant gratification now on the flip side of that I also massively got a big dopamine hit from paying it down so this is why some people love a payment plan they love the feeling of getting a payment plan of getting a maybe a credit card, getting a loan, buying the thing outright, because then they get the instant gratification of getting the thing. And then they get the gratification of paying it down and seeing the balance go down like wild. And this is why there's never, it's not about whether or not the credit card is wrong or right, or whether debt is wrong or right. It's not, it's just a choice to pay something off over time. Got that from Amanda Francis. But actually what I now understand about myself with ADHD and a lot of the clients that I've worked with is that ADHD, because we are constantly, there's a chemical gap there that we're trying to fill, right? The chemical gap will find any way. And so if you've created a method where instant gratification is the only thing that scratches the itch or soothes the gap, right? Then you are going to have an interesting relationship with credit cards, with loans, with borrowing money, whatever it might be. So even if you were to then go through the journey of getting out of debt, if you haven't scratched the itch or soothed the thing there through authentic healing, through the emotional work, through and through you know all the other things that support ADHD, so lifestyle, nutrition, where relevant medication. Like if you're still not doing all those things, it won't matter if you practically get out of debt because you'll probably get back in it again later on. And it's just because when we're chemically driven, we will do anything to feel and chase those same chemicals. So this is where I really think that credit cards, loans and payment plans can be really either really good, some with ADHD, especially if they get addicted to the paying them off. But that's why it happens in the first place. So if you've been going round and round with your money mindset and you have ADHD and you find yourself overspending and then paying it off and overspend, that could be a cycle there that's actually just chemically driven and that you could interrupt that pattern and cycle anytime and decide that you want to change that emotionally. And, you know, I talk about some of this stuff in the masterclass. So make sure to go get that. It's lucysuperfox.com forward slash money masterclass. And it's absolutely free. So that was the first thing I wanted to talk about. So that's if you're in the lack energy. And I talk a lot about what lack is in that masterclass. So I dig into not just like lack mindset, like, oh, there's never enough. And I'm not worthy. Like where lack is showing up in your life and you might not notice it. And I give you some examples of where that might be. So that that really was like number one thing is I really spotted in the ADHD kind of behavior, how that can affect money mindset. I think 
The second thing with ADHD is we, as we, you know, you guys know, I've talked about a lot when we've got ADHD or we've got neurodiversity, there is a much stronger link to nervous system dysregulation and all in the works of Gaber Mate, you know, not for me to explain in a 20 minute podcast, but there's massive connection and links to nervous system dysregulation. And when we're in nervous system dysregulation and we're in our sympathetic nervous system, so we're in our active part of our nervous system that's reacting to things rather than in our parasympathetic nervous system, which is relaxing, you know, resting kind of side of things. So things are easy, calm and peaceful. If we are massively in a state of nervous, nervous, if we are in a state of nervous system dysregulation, so we are constantly being triggered into fight, flight, freeze or fawn, whether that's coming from being triggered about money or not, that will be affecting our money mindset. It will be affecting our ability to hold, attract, keep, store, spend wealth and abundance. Because when we are constantly moving through one of those states and every person is different, so whether it's fight, flight, freeze or form, what we're constantly in is an activated state of the nervous system. When we're in an activated state, all of the energy that we could be emitting and vibrating to stay in a powerful energy of abundance gets like contracted, gets like tight to keep us safe so that we're ready to run, you know, from that saber toothed tiger so that we're ready to protect ourselves, right? Ready to, to punch those fights, ready to deflect, ready to keep ourselves safe, ready to hide away. All of that energy that would be our vibrational magnetic power that would help us attract in that abundance, be open to receiving that abundance, shuts down. And so this is where if you've got ADHD and you either have recently found out, it's been, you know, haven't really known for a while, it's been disdiagnosed, unregulated for a while. What often happens is we're in a chronic state of dysregulation in the nervous system. That can be a result of not the ADHD, could be a result of lots of things but we tend to be more predisposed to nervous system dysregulation. And so because of that lack of nervous system regulation, that lack of steadiness, that lack of capacity, that calmness, that leads to a lack of capacity, that's gonna impact our ability to receive wealth, our ability to hold wealth, and our ability to process and know what to do with it. Because there just isn't, when our body is in that fight, flight, freeze, or fawn, there is an extra energy to do the things. There is literally the energy to keep us alive. And so when we're in that chronic state of survival, and I'm going to use that word, we're not thriving. So we're not thriving on a, you know, a body level. We're not thriving on an energy level, but we're not going to be thriving financially because that energy of survival shows up in the way that we think about money, the way that we feel with money, the way that we act with money, the way that we react to money. And so this is where often with ADHD, we see a lot of the up and the down with money. So we make loads of money and then we spend loads of money, make loads of money, spend loads of money because we've got the dopamine cycle going up and down, but also we've got the dysregulated nervous system and the nervous system is just going to be acting out what you're thinking, what you're feeling and impacting what you're thinking, what you're feeling, right? It's all a loop guys. So what you think and how you feel affects how you, your energy and how you act and your energy and how you act based on the world around you affects how you think and feel like it's a loop. So when that loop is going round and round, you're going to find yourself going round and round with money. And this is why I think a lot of people with ADHD feel stuck financially. They reach a ceiling or they reach or they're very attached to where that money comes from because that's where the dopamine is. Right. Or that's where the, that that's the kind of how they've attached survival. The thought of you know being open to receiving more money feels terrifying and paralyzing, especially if there is unearthed work that hasn't been done yet. So I hope that makes sense. I just really wanted to share. I felt really called cool to share that I think money mindset is massively impacted by ADHD, massively impacted by nervous system dysregulation, which is more predisposed to those people with ADHD because it's affecting the way that we move with money, the way that we act with money in terms of how we're feeling in our neurotransmitters and our energy, but also how we're feeling in ourselves and how we feel in ourselves. So how we think, how we feel, our energy and our nervous system in terms of how much space and capacity we have to hold things massively affects our wealth and our wealth mindset, as well as the practical steps that we then go onward to take when it comes to acting and being with money. So a quick one today, I felt like that was what I needed to share. I'm going to be sharing more about money for the next two podcasts. 
because we are moving into March. It's money month. It's all about being a magnet for wealth. So if you want to get that free masterclass, it's lucysuperfox.com forward slash money masterclass. The money course is going on sale soon too. If you're inside the masterclass, you have already got a free pre-sale price. It's never going to be as cheap as it is inside there. If money, getting your money mindset in check, transforming your financial experience is your goal for 2024 then it is money month. You are going to get it the most cost effective inside that masterclass. There is an exclusive price just for you. And then the money course will go on public sale later this month. So I hope you will have the most beautiful rest of week. That was the way that I see it. As always, I'd love for you to leave me a little review. Just click on the stars. Let me know what you thought. Take 10 seconds to leave me a little comment if you think it would help serve somebody and someone else find this incredible podcast. And don't forget, if you want to grab that masterclass, it's lucysuperfox.com forward slash money masterclass. Have the most amazing week. This was the way that I see it. My name is Lucy Superfox and I'll see you on the next.